to give a straight answer to it, but I just think like we don't see it as in Hungary or, or that like we wouldn't see it as a job or, or a need to stay hungry. We just love it, like we the enjoyment going out training and like whether it be like the hardest drills or the toughest sessions are nearly the sessions we enjoy the most because like we just we nearly enjoy going to the well the whole time and you you're it's nearly like a nearly a getaway from life most of the time, you know, train and there and stuff. It's you get to park what's going on in, in the real world, say, and just go with your friends and just have a bit of fun and even going into every game and even going in towards next year, like lads are already nearly excited to to get back and get trained and like and just to just have the crack and have a bit of fun again, like. The Maroon and White Pod brought to you by CityLink. For bookings, timetables, updates and any other information, head to citylink.ie. So delighted now to be joined in part one of the show by St. Thomas's All-Ireland winning hurling manager, Kenneth Burke. Kenneth, when you hear those words, All-Ireland winning hurling manager, how does it feel? Ah, uh, yeah, it's it's surreal, I suppose. Uh, a week later now and kind of sinking in, I suppose, and yeah, delighted for the whole the whole parish and the club and a lot of work has gone into it down through the years, not just, not just the management team at the moment and um, it's just a great feeling around the place at the moment for everyone is so delighted giving them such a boost and even um, the sport we got in Galway has been massive as well so we're delighted for that and yeah it's is um, I suppose after a few days you're you're not really it's kind of surreal like I said and you're uh, did we really get over the line so you're kind of in the game you're just and afterwards you're just over the moon the emotions are high and to win a game like that by one point and um, yeah we're just delighted like for yourself to do it as a player and a manager, and the last time you won it, your father was obviously over the team. How does that feel for you personally? Ah, uh, yeah, it's nice. I suppose it's a personal thing, but yeah, to be honest, I don't really think about it that much. And for me, taking the job initially was trying to get us back to and I learned or trying to get us back to be challenging for any. Obviously, if you win Galway, and that's going, it's a big challenge as it is. So I knew there was potential there at the time that. The group could get try and get another one, and I suppose the two years, the two last and semi-finals were were probably uh, steep learning curve for us and, and and myself as a management team, and and we learned definitely learned from that, and I suppose that kind of got us the resolve in the guys that to keep coming back and finally get over the line the last day. Uh, um, yeah, the, it's a great feeling. I suppose you play playing and managing. It's 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 a different scenario. You're you're as a player, you kind of just look after yourself and and try and get yourself prepared for the whole for, for the equation and get your own performance right I suppose management you have to get everything ready for preparation and but a good like good guys around us like and even the back of the club like they got so much done during the week and um no it's massive feeling and delighted uh, like I said to get over the line just on the celebrations itself there's a lot of videos going around people up on shoulders uh lots of singing mm-hmm. going on what what was all that like? Yeah, yeah. The few days after now were pretty amazing, all right? The the boys just said non go non stop, like, and I suppose the relief and there was more relief for a lot of them, and they were just delighted and they they enjoyed themselves, like they train hard and they party hard as well. Some of them, so they <laughs> delighted with them that they really enjoyed it. And at the end of the day, if you didn't. Uh, enjoy it why would we be doing it and that's that's really it like to to try and get days like that and enjoy it with your families and friends and lots of lots of guys from our own local clubs were, were around as well and they like that like i said earlier the support we had was, was immense like so we're delighted that it brought a bit of joy for a few days to people around the place before we get into the match uh, you yourselves have been the benchmark of St. Thomas as a club, but you look overall what the club have achieved this year, an under-20 title, your juniors nearly got to a final, the girls won the Camogie, like, fantastic year when you look yeah. at all that across the board. Yeah, like, the social last night and the, the Camogie written there, it was a fantastic team for them and they're back up senior A and they're definitely pushing the, the, the young team there as well so yeah for the club obviously it's going well at the moment very strong and I suppose winning breeds winning and people want to get involved and it's probably easier to get people involved and get people rowing in to help out and like it's it's taking a long time to even challenge or get there and there's a lot of heartache and bad days like when I started off it was intermediate and we lost three or four semi-finals and we, we 
we're thinking will you ever get out into media never mind win a senior title so it takes a long time and it just it doesn't happen and there is a lot of work along the way and it starts with the younger guys are obviously very lucky with a lot of kind of a core group that came together and that was kind of the main, the mainstay of the team the last 10 or 12 years and older guys at the time that were there and um and we're very lucky that younger guys come in so obviously we won a few and then the younger guys are looking up and they're like well I want to be part of that and it keeps them I suppose to stick around a lot of clubs of guys leaving and emigrating and we're, we've been lucky that way that no one has really gone and it keeps everyone here and it keeps them they think okay we'll stay here we have a chance maybe to get to a semi-final or final and see how far that how far we go from there like so and again it takes a lot of re- resources in the background to keep that going as well like in fairness to that, the pitches have been up in Thompson's are in good nick and we've lights there now and everything is there for us so we're, we're, we're uh, delighted in the, the shape we're in at the moment and there's a lot of developing plans in the in the pipeline as well. So hopefully we keep building and we keep challenging at, at the top table. And even if we're not winning, if we just keep at the top table and keep challenging, we, we'll be happy with that. Just on a, a whole this year at the start, um, a couple of your players at different uh, times have mentioned that you've been doubted at some stages. But this year, the start of the Galway Championship, there's obviously a lot of talk about Lockery at the start of this championship that they were favourites in some people's eyes. Did that motivate you in somewhat? Yeah, it probably did motivate the, the players and that they were probably written off and like they're not, I know there's a few of them pushing on, but they're still relatively young guys and I suppose they like to be to push and they put and they push themselves as much as they can and um like you have probably have to get an angle and try and motivate them and Again, a lot of the time they self motivate themselves, and uh, like for us as management team, we're just trying to develop them. And I suppose they've, they've been getting better the last few years and performing well. And the younger guys are, are getting better all the time, and trying to we challenge them as well to figure things out in the field themselves. Like, and I suppose that's the biggest asset they're able to figure things out in the field themselves when things aren't going well. And um, they they like the chaos, and when they're in the chaos, they seem to be doing better. Like, so yeah, they're motivated guys and I suppose they're hungry and like that I said earlier I suppose that desire to win kind of emulate it goes trickles down to the younger lads and they keep pushing and like from the middle of the year start of the year we've had 30 guys training minimum at, when they're in the 20s were training with us there was nights there with nearly 45 lads training and it was it was a bit madness at the time there was so many lads there but like that was the kind of vibe that's there and the older lads weren't afraid to to push on the younger lads if they weren't doing what they were supposed to do and it kind of t- gives lead. They lead by example, like so. We're very lucky to have the leaders we have in the club, and and the, and everyone else rolls in behind it. Like, is it a challenge at all when the players then go away with the county, or does it almost feel like when those players come back, it's nearly somewhat of a new team? Ah, uh, yeah. Like we're, we're probably used to it at this stage that the guy is going to be gone for a few few months, like and. Well, yes, and it gives chances other less for to play in the league and get into challenge games and see we can try guys out and see what they're going to do. Are they going to be? Are they going to push on and push for a place later on the year? Are they going to be pushing to get on as, as a sub? So, uh, we're, we're we're lucky that we've that big panel. I've said it plenty of times before. Like we probably wouldn't be in this position without the, all the guys at the back end of the panel that are pushing and training all the time and are letting us able to play training games and keeps the standards high as well. Like so, um, yeah, the guys going away. That doesn't really affect us, and we can we can give guys an opportunity to step up. Like, if you're to put this success of the six in a row and the All Ireland down to one thing, what is it for you? Oh, that's a tough question. Yeah, um, I don't know. It's probably just the sheer hunger that the group have of even not just winning. It's just trying to better themselves and ch- see how much they can get out of themselves and can they improve as players? Can they? set the standards higher and like the, you can see them they're probably as fit as strong as they ever were and um, that's probably the event they just love, her, love playing hurling they enjoy re- a lot as well which is key if they weren't giant they wouldn't be there so they like pushing each other and I, yeah it's a, it's an intrinsic kind of motivation for them that they want to get better to keep developing and obviously perform as, to their maximum and, and obviously a few of them are getting older and they know that they're not going to be at the top level for, for that much longer and I suppose they're trying to get every last drop out of it and we're lucky for us that that's the kind of people we have and they're, they're keeping the standard really high and and like I said earlier it keeps the younger guys they know what's required and what's what's acceptable like so 
I think it's just the motivation for themselves that they want to perform and enjoy the hurling, and I think that's the biggest factor. Is it is it more special now when you see the role of honour for the club all Ireland and? Obviously, you've achieved six in a row and they've been heartbreaking so many semi finals. But when you just see now two All Ireland's beside St. Thomas's, does it does it do the, the club justice, I suppose, for all the success you've had now? Yeah, definitely. I like we wanted to obviously win our first one coming out of Galway. We, we didn't really know what to expect and we kind of just went out and hurled and performed as best we could at the time. And obviously, we've been in semi finals since then and haven't performed some days we did perform. and uh, yeah, we're, we're delighted to get that second one over the line and um, for the club, it just kind of cements the team as probably a special team, a special group at this time and you no know, delight with the boys to get their second one and they, they really wanted it and they could have, after the last two years, they, a few of them could have stepped away and said, oh, OK, we're not, we're just not going to get over the line here. So they're just the resilience in them and the, like I said, the the hunger in them is massive. So delighted for the boys that they got their rewards on Sunday. You said that was an aim since the start of the year in an interview. When did you mention that the All Ireland was the aim? Was that from the very outset? I think we had a chat after last year, and like we were very disappointed with the way the semi final went last year. So, and obviously most guys were they were all coming back again, and um, yeah, you just had goals, and I suppose we're lucky that we knew if we play perform and train as hard as we can, and get to a county final or semi final and push on and try and win the Galway Championship and then if we get out again, really go after an All Ireland series. So yeah, it was a goal to get back there. And obviously there's a lot of stepping stones along the way. It just doesn't happen. It was I suppose that's your just your main goal at the top maybe. And then you obviously the, all their mini goals underneath to get there and the players have their own goals to get to as well. And different lads get on the team or get on as a sub and that kind of sets the tone for everyone else in like so yeah we're lucky that I suppose putting that has down as a goal is 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 a special for the group, and thankfully, they really went after it, and they didn't. They just tried to did everything for it the last the last year and the, the last two years. So we're delighted for them and the people in the in the club. So yeah, it's a special time, and we're delighted. Was there a certain stage for you on the line when you when you knew that there was a big chance this was going to happen? Yeah, like the, I suppose the second half, first half, we didn't probably take the right shot, shot selections at the time. And um, in in the belly gunner game, I suppose we were kind of wrote off. I can, the lead said today, we're just going to give everything we have, empty the tank. And I know it's a cliche, but they literally did like just give it, do everything you have. And it's, if that's not good enough and they still beat us, that well, we can say we gave everything, that's it. So and we, we, we would have been happy with that. So like that game was up and down and we we're up up and losing and came back to win by or winning by a pint and then at the penalties I can so after we got that was a massive fill up of confidence for them like and there probably was that little bit of doubt will we get over the semi final and once we won a game like that it definitely gave them more confidence and belief going forward into the final and uh, again I suppose flip side you had the few, four or five weeks again to kind of reset the goal reset the mind and get them rested up a little bit and get tra- a bit of training into them again and target who was coming down the line like and um yeah the last did in we uh the second half obviously when James got sent off they def definitely tore into it and got after every ball and like that we said we weren't going to get tight on the end just give everything we have empty the tank and we, if again if we didn't get the result at least we said we, we couldn't done, do any more we, we we emptied ourselves out do what we have to do we said we're going to make mistakes just keep going go off the next ball and and just believe in yourself that you can get the next ball and keep in the we're just spoke about don't be thinking about the result, just keep performing as best you can, keep working, keep tackling. And that's what the guys did. They just stepped up and they really got after them and little hooks here, little tap a little half a block and guy just intercepts the pass. That that's the small things that make the, the bigger things work at, at the end of the day. Like so guys got good scores during the game and no, there's numerous things during the game, but I suppose we went up two points and when we went ahead. I I was thinking, okay, we we can hold we can hold this on. Like, and we're we're playing well. We were we were creating chances. So if we're not performing and and down, definitely the doubts would have stuck, came in. But the guys were performing so well. You think you you can get over the line here, but you just have to stay in the moment and kind of control what's in front of you and see where we need to get better and where are we where can we get after our Lachlan's? Where can we cause tr- trouble for them? And that's we kind of stayed at and just like you said, 
stay in the moment, look at the performance and what we can do when hopefully the result looks after itself. So thankfully that happened like so much chaos and madness during the game. You said yet you haven't had a chance to watch it back fully, but watch it, yeah. Mm. J- Jordan Malloy's incident, Connor Heary's incident, James' incident, Finton's replay. Like, I suppose yeah. when you when you are on the line, you can't control any of that. No. So, how are you reacting when you are on the line? Yeah, like obviously, there's a few times of probably getting mad and a, a bit cracked in it with our things that's happening to us and and stuff we're doing as well. So it's. It's a, it's both on both sides. You're kind of trying to control it in and like, okay, what do we need to do here to can we get move a guy into a different position or where are we in trouble or where can we get after them like that? That's all you can do. And um, there's nothing else you can really control after that. If you want to get messages out to the lads, it, it can be difficult as well. If you're trying to switch guys around, it can be very hard. Uh, which is a problem. I think Mayor Forna should come back for sure because you can't get messages out, especially in bigger games. But anyway, it's a different issue. But yeah. um, yeah, the madness at the time. It was it was fairly crazy, right? But at the time, I didn't really didn't think about it because even people saying anything afterwards, I was kind of like, oh yeah, I remember that now, yeah. But at the time, it didn't really bother me. I was like, just okay, keep going. What are we to do next? Like that, that was the main thing. Just stay in the moment and try and make sure we got the best out of the ways. I could see at one stage you won a sideline out near you, and you you kind of brought that energy on the line. To, I suppose give the players a bit of lift. Do you think that's important when you're in such a battle? Yeah, I think so. The small things can can give them a lift and can see that it's a big moment in the game or if lads are having that little doubt and if you can if they see management that's their doubt have doubts, it can creep into them as well. So that's why you have to stay so positive and keep keep motivating them and give them that lift. And yeah, them little things can be can just keep the, the opposition doubts as well. Like so you just have to Keep motivating your own guys and trying to control them as best as possible. Like so, and, and other times you have to. There's no point get losing the head either. You have to be staying that moment for a second in the sky. And the next ball, what are we to do? Like, and what's our job? So, um, yeah, the emotion of the time can run high in a game like that. It's it's up and down and it's so tight. Like so, it can be hard to control it. Right. As in, I had to buy a pint yet. Huh? as, as in. in- has he had to put the hand in the pocket yet since that winner? Pro, I doubt no, no, I do Yeah, just some score now, right? Um, to score get a point like that, time up, level game. It's crazy stuff, really. Right, the rover stuff. You could, you couldn't write it like if you told us that was the way it's good. The game was going to finish. You said no way, not a chance. And, you be giving out and while you're shooting out there, get the ball across the square, get it by recycle it back out, and we plenty of bodies up there. There was loads of lads of fairness. We they pushed up the field and they were going for us like one more chance here. We'll try and get get the winner. Like and I uh, had to some score now just to get it away. But he's uh, that's he's it's in the wrist. Like he just has that little you can swing in a tight space and get get the ball away. And if he gets the connection, they'll always have a chance. Like so, yeah, it was a good score. Like unbelievable score really to to win the game. But obviously they still got a chance to level it and. They came back and fair. They got the ball, puck out, and won the puck out, and came up and like it's heartbreak for them, obviously, to lose by a pint. And we, we've had that kind of emotion. So I think a lot of guys probably definitely back again. You won't see the end of them and their young team as well. So they'll learn from that as well. No more than ourselves did down to the years. So I think um, it was a roller coaster right of a game. Just at the end, you were talking. I heard you on the Examiner podcast. You want to embrace it and you want to stay on the pitch, but obviously the football finals happening uh, straight after that. Yeah. But isn't that what it's about, like embracing it? Because there, there's been six in a row and there's been so many highs, but there's been dark days in All-Ireland semi-finals. Like you probably realise more than anyone in this group, like it, it was really about kind of living in the moment and appreciating what you achieved. Yeah, exactly. Like you, you really want to... Soak in a few minutes, like the really special minutes on the field with all the players, the management, and that kind of relief and uh, that gratitude inside each other, and they're just delighted for each other. And it, there are special moments; they don't only happen off a few times in your life in different phases of your life. So, um, yeah, it's, it's you're you have to just embrace it, and even speaking to the lads afterwards, I can. T- I would just spoke about that embrace the the parish and the people and. People want to talk to you and go to have to chat with them and give them the time and you know the fairness to the guys they talk, spoke to everyone I say in the clubhouse that night like and just kind of got around everyone like everyone's everyone wants to talk to them and get it get a piece of them and 
can be um, can be high it can be hard like in when people are dragging and pulling out of you. So I said, Don't mind us, there'll be plenty other days we you just enjoy enjoy the night and take take it easy and people have have a chat with them and just talk about the game and because they want to know what you're thinking and in fairness, the boys, they all had good time for the people during the week. Like for yourself, now you're obviously going into the minor job, and it's probably only going to get busier for you. Now. Is the hope to stay on with Thomas's for twenty twenty four? Um, I don't know. At the at, last week, we were said no. <laughs> <laughs> I was going. That was it. But uh, yeah, it's it's a. Bit of a conundrum at the moment. It's it's hard to see how we could do the two of them. Like it's just going to be mental. Like and it's uh, minor will be just over, and you'll be trying to look after Thomas straight away. Then the championship won't be too far away, and they'll be obviously training before that as well, and league before that. Like so, it'll be very hard to do it. I don't know. I'm not going to be sure in the short answer. I just don't, I don't know at the moment. It's it's a uh, it'll be a tough one if to make that decision. Obviously, to win the learning, you you want to try and. Stay with the group as well, but the other side, it, how is it actually going to work? Is is it? It's obviously of young kids at home and wife Emma are trying to juggle all that and work life, and it'll be difficult. Like so, we'll see. We'll have a chat about with a few of them during the week, and we we'll see what'll happen. Hey, looking forward to the managers now. Yeah, looking forward to now. Yeah, we got we have a few weeks done. We're down to about forty two or three now, so. Probably we'll have to release a few more guys in the next week or two. But uh, yes, it's going well. They're a good group and they're willing to learn and they're pushing hard now. Last schools games, that kind of stuff going on at the moment. So after another few weeks, obviously more more few teams will be gone. So it'll kind of get more, get them training a lot more. So I know it's good. Looking forward to now. It's going to be fairly hectic from now on. Yeah, it'll be three times a week on, on the pitch probably. And we won't feel it. We'll be about 10 weeks time. We'll be out in, in April and down to Kenny in the first round, which won't be easy. So it'll be straight into it, yeah. Be good though, it's exciting. Actually. Isn't it great though now for yourself to go into a role that you're? I I know it's been a year or two now where we've been in, but to be in this uh, Leinster Championship and to have competitive games coming up. Oh, absolutely! That's yes. great to get games, and there's loads of games. Like you have three games, and you've could have you could have seven or eight games. It depends how you how far you get through. Like so, it's be massive for them and. It'll be a massive learning curve for them getting loads of games against top quality opposition and you see guys who's going to perform and, and you're going to probably get to see a lot of guys. So kind of if if guys get injured after obviously get more lads in. So it'll be great to get them games like get into Leinster and play the, the top teams there and then hopefully get on to a little series after that. But it'll be a challenge and we're we're looking forward to and, and and once the games get started, it'll be right into it like it's week on week. So there won't be much time to prepare them in, in between physically wise and just kind of getting them game plans together and looking after them kind of keep them fresh and so it'll be a lot of work now in the next 10 or 11 weeks to get them ready and just finally before we finish uh, Kenneth is there a big difference for you between going from working with a senior club team to 15 and 16 year olds now uh, there is like yeah it's 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 a it's a different kind of an obviously older guys you, you have you've kind of and I suppose the Thomas team at that moment, they were obviously very experienced and they knew what they had to do when you're just kind of guiding them along uh, in a certain extent and they know the way they want to play a lot of the time and just trying to tweak that. So you're going into an environment now where you're trying to get a group of guys, obviously a county team, and they they don't play together and trying to get them to play as a team, which can which will be difficult and trying to get a kind of a game plan and what you expect from them in different positions. And yeah, you're like, again, they're... Some of them have developed are stronger, some of them are smaller. So it's it's, it's trying to get them all to blend together. And it it, it's, it's a lot, it will be a lot harder to get them to play as a unit. And because they're the best players in their clubs, they're probably doing everything. And now you're trying to pull them all together. And But that's the challenge. And we're looking forward to that. Like, Good stuff. Well, Kenneth, best of luck uh, with the Miners this year. And congratulations on a fantastic achievement. Thanks, Rina Pot. Thanks. On part two of the show, I'm now joined by two St. Thomas's players where we have Fintan Burke and James Regan on the podcast. A week on, lads, from winning the All-Ireland. James, coming to you first, has it started to kick in yet? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think just the uh, buzz around the place the last, uh, last week and a bit has, uh, has been unbelievable. You know, something... Um, I don't think any of us would forget, you know, we also had a great week last week and uh, we had our club social in um, just Saturday night gone and just a really, really special night. We uh, 
Um, obviously, got uh, presented our medals and the Pony got presented their 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 medals as well. And just a great vibe around the place. Just a huge positive night for the clubs, you know. So, um, just a whole week, week and a bit, will live live long in the memory, you know. So, yeah, it's uh, it's unbelievable now. Has it kicked in for you, Fintan? Yeah, I suppose same as that. It's a long week last week, obviously celebrating and stuff. And it's probably only when you go back to to normal life on Monday morning that you you realise, say, what you're after achieving and and what you're after winning. So yeah. With that, lads, there was some St. Thomas's players going for seven days, others going for two or three. The celebrations in itself. What's that actually like when you get back to the parish, James? Um, I should look at it. It's just as I said, a great, great buzz around the place. Um, I suppose you, you, it, it, it helps you realize what it means for everyone as well. You know, it's, it's not obviously just uh, the group of players and and management. It's um, it's family, it's friends, it's it's the community. You know, and and in fairness, the, the goodwill we've we've got from outside the club as well within the county has been has been unbelievable. You know, um, I think we, when I, when I went back to work on on Wednesday. The amount of good wishes and everything from from students and staff like was was unbelievable down in 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 Clare College, um, you know. So yes, it's, it's it's special for 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 everyone involved. But as I said, it's uh, it was huge goodwill from from outside the community as well, you know. So yeah, that's uh, it's all positive. Been to the newer part of the younger crews who stayed going for a while uh, last week. What was that like? Yeah, I'm one of the older lads now of the younger crew, I suppose. But um, I don't know, sure, it's, it's it's magical, really. And I suppose we're we're very uh, we're very aware that it, it might never happen again, and that these times are very special. So we probably try to to make the most of it. And yeah, as James said, there like the Sunday night, Sunday Monday are probably the most special nights when you're coming back down to the clubhouse and seeing friends and family and people just genuinely delighted for you. And obviously Monday, then you're you're on it all day, and <laughs> lads are just in, in good form. You know, they're just. I suppose there's so much emotion bottled up in, in obviously trying to get there and the disappointing losses of of say previous years that it kind of all comes out on that Monday. And you're the singer of the group, is it? Yeah, James. James used to be, but uh, he got sick of singing. He was so late for training so often. So I said, I, I better take up the mental. He's As a bit it, horse, Paul, isn't he? Huh? He's a bit horse, isn't he? <laughs> How did you feel, James, getting the singing duties relieved? Oh, I, I was already delighted though. Know, anyone that knows me well knows I'm, I'm a vice of a crow, to be honest with you. So, uh, yeah, Finton and a, and a couple of them are, are a lot better singers than I am. Darren Farrell, especially there, he, he really he really uh, came of age there the Monday with some of the songs he sang. He was he was unbelievable, you know. So, yeah, they're, they're special boys. And, uh, yeah, no, I, I was well, uh, well happy to, to hand over the singing duties out, to be honest with you. <laughs> What day did you enjoy the most of the celebrations? I suppose every day, every day is nearly a small bit different. Um, obviously Sunday, as you said a few times already, or it's very, very kind of family and friends orientated. Or if you're kind of stuck in a whirlwind of coming back down to them and getting to talk to them, because obviously we know how much like they put in every bit of effort that we put in. They put in just as much looking after us, and they have to deal with us when we're cranky and and stuff like that. But um. I suppose Monday was 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 wild enough. We were back in uh, the village in there, actually greased for a while. We got breakfast and a few pints, and then back to uh, back to Peter's well. Fergal Cunyar was playing a few songs with Darren Farrell, and I heard just the place was hopping like everyone's a good farm. And it's just probably words can't describe. I suppose the the feeling and buzz around the place. Yeah, I, de- I definitely agree. There, Finton. There, there was hard to pick out one night to be honest with you, there, or or one day. You know there. They were all great days and just all, everyone in, in, in good form and, and just a, a serious positivity around the pitch, you know. So um to be hard to pinpoint one, you know, it was it was it was an unbelievable week. Obviously there every day takes on a life of its own, but to get back to this year as a whole, after last year and the Dunloy disappointment before you started out to county championship, Fintan, there was obviously a lot of talk about Locker A this year and a lot of people were tipping them to win the championship. Did that motivate you as players? Uh, not really, no. I don't think we'd never, like, obviously, given how poor we've been, say, in the All-Ireland series over the last few years, we didn't need any motivation from any anywhere outside the group, say. It's always inside the group and I suppose we always try to focus on ourselves first and 
and try to have yourselves right because there's no way focusing on someone else and, and not performing yourself like right, you know and how did you approach this year James was it any different or was it just the same as any other year I know I think as a group we'd be very much take one game as it comes um, every game every year brings different challenges you know so yeah from the start of the year um, everyone have different individual goals I suppose and, and team goals but yeah, Keenan and the lads, and and very much us as players as well, or we'll just uh, take one game as it comes, and 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 see what what challenge that brings, and and try to overcome that that challenge. Really, you know. Do you think this year with James? I know David was out for the start of the championship, and he came back, obviously at the county final stage. But having very close to a fully fit squad, do you think that was a huge difference this year compared to previous years? Ah, yeah, I sure. Look at it. it. It's it's. I suppose we're we're um. We're a rural club, so obviously we're we're uh, everybody is needed, you know. Um, but this year we we had a hugely strong panel, you know. We'd we the guts of, I think it was thirty thirty seven uh, panel members there, you know, and um, I think over that thirty seven, uh, one of uh, uh, as, uh, as you said, David coming back into it, but. Outside of that, we didn't probably pick up uh, too many injuries. Um, obviously up, up until the last day where, where David Sherry got injured, you know. So as a panel, we we, we probably kept uh, fairly injury free. So that helped us to, to train very well throughout the year and and um, keep the standards up and trend, you know. So um, yeah, like I suppose it was disappointing to lose lose lads um other years, but these things happen, you know. It's sport, you as are going to get injured from time to time, but um. I don't think we ever used it as as an excuse, you know. Probably that was more nice from outside the camp. All the, all those games that um that maybe we were missing as it wasn't we didn't see it as an excuse, you know. We just unfortunately didn't perform on, on those days. But um thankfully, yeah, we we, we were fairly injury free this year and and um yeah, we went well. The hunger and the consistency, Fintan, has just been unbelievable in Galway, but how have you kept hungry and consistent in Galway, do you think? Uh, I suppose it's hard enough to, to give a straight answer to it, but I just think, like, we don't see it as in hungry or, or that, like, we wouldn't see it as a job or, or a need to stay hungry. We just love it, like, we, the enjoyment going out training and, like, whether it be, like, the hardest drills or the toughest sessions are nearly the sessions we enjoy the most because, like, we just, we nearly enjoy going to the well the whole time and you, you're, it's nearly like a nearly a getaway from life most of the time, you know, training there and stuff. It's you get to park what's going on in, in the real world, say, and just go with your friends and just have a bit of fun. And even going into every game and even going in towards next year, like lads are already nearly excited to, to get back and get training, and like and just to just have the crack and have the bit of fun again. Like this year, Fenton, your juniors bet it to the county semi final. I think it was Montbellus, Kahana, bet them. Did that help the group, do you think? Yeah, I suppose we were probably only a point away from from getting to the junior final. Kind of Murray missed a point coming towards the end. They would have leveled it and brought it brought it to extra time. Say, but no, in fairness, like um, I suppose the um, disappointing thing is that we're such a small community that losing lads from the junior has an awful impact. Like we lose lads if you lose two or three lads there, the juniors are often impacted. And in fairness, they're very good. They don't they don't complain too much about it. Like you know, they know it's for the greater good of the club. Like. You came through the group there, James, and then obviously you play Capitagal in that quarter final. Even that Capitagal game in the first half, Capitagal were, were giving you a real battle and things weren't probably going too well in the opening half. But to stick in at that day in the second half, do you think that was a, a turning point? Uh, yeah, just did like this. There's probably a time throughout the year where. Um... We found difficult patches in games, and that's the like the college championship is it's it's seriously competitive. Like there's, I think there's no game within the last six years that we've dominated really from start to finish. You know, and the Capital game in the quarter final was no different. Um, yeah, I think they probably should have been up maybe even a little bit more half time. Um, probably just made a few adjustments in maybe at half time and um just got on top of them then I suppose for periods in in the second half and and maybe got a couple more scores on the board that. That uh just got a result going the right way in the finish. Was David Burke nearly like a coach, lads, when he was injured? 
Yeah, he was Gourmet. Gourmet. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know where I'd listen to them. We, we make out who we're listening to them. <laughs> <laughs> but would he be taking sessions when he was out injured or was it just really on the line on the match day? Yeah, I suppose he was just on the line. He obviously was doing his own bit of running and stuff, but all he was doing was really, he'd do water on the day of a match, all right, and do hurdles, but no, no, he wouldn't be taking any sessions like that. Like he, he'd obviously have a, have a guide and bice there when, when he was when he was out of action there, you know, uh, you know, David as well as as, as those now he, he likes to keep standards high. So he would have definitely been been driving the standards from from the line there. You know, um, a hugely in, in, in influential uh, vice there when when obviously he was out out of injured. Just after that, uh, Capitaga game, the Sarsfields game in the semi final, he dominated that game really for large periods. But fit in Sarsfields came in that game in the last ten minutes, and they just threw Everton. Actually, but he got over that one. Was that was that relief to get over it in the end, heading into a county final? Yeah, I suppose every game you're you're that small bit relieved, like you're only the puck of a ball ever really from losing. Like, and I suppose we juggled in fairness to thank thank that day he he pulled off three or four great saves there coming towards the end. But yeah, I suppose you've relief every day because, like as I said, you're only you're only one game away from losing. You know, you're only one puck of the ball away from losing in, in most games in Galway. Like so, yeah. The Turlock game then in the county final, James, to complete the six in a row. Is is that up there with one of your best achievements, obviously, as a as a club? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like it's well but again, as Fenton said, like there was there was nothing in that game, you know, right went, went right down to the wire and put the ball in it again. I suppose we we just um maybe took took our chances, maybe that, that small little bit better, but there was nothing in it and um, yeah I suppose it was a massive massive achievement to, to get six in a row but you don't really think like that I suppose when when, um, when you're in it you, you just uh, as Kenneth said uh, that week he he, he said um, play like it's nearly your first county final you know so when when you're in that situation and, and we wouldn't have spoken I suppose about, about the six in a row but looking back now it was obviously a, a massive achievement for, for the club Cyril Barrell's been on the podcast numerous times and he says after, I think it was the county final last year against Loch Grey, they interviewed David Burke and Sir Farrell said to David Burke, it must be a great achievement to do five in a row. David Burke said back to Sir Farrell, I want to do seven in a row. That's what the Peters well team have done. Do you all think like that, Fintan? I don't know. That'll just be David being a bit weird, like, but I don't know. I suppose it's, it's, <laughs> it's probably a testament to him driving standards and I suppose you have to be a small bit small bit crazy like that and, and try push for the next level. Like if you're if you're only kind of happy to sit around and, and, and clap yourself in the back with what you've achieved so far, you're probably not gonna push on and go to the next level. Like and obviously in fairness, if he's looking at it like that, maybe more let's just start looking at it like that when you look at what he's won like and achieved throughout his, his career. Do you, do you ever both think like if you look you won your first county title back in twelve and to see how many county titles the club has now do you ever just both look at that and is it tough to realise and kind of when you see that, James, that you've won that amount or are, are you not really surprised at all? Um, oh, gee, no, look, we're, we're, we know we're so lucky and we're, we're so privileged <clears> to, <throat> to be in the situation um, that we're in. Like, you know, as I know there's lads throughout this county that had, that had give their two hands for one county title, you know, so we're hugely privileged Um do we realize it? Jesus, we we do, you know, like we we've worked hard for, for everything we've got, I suppose. Um mm. it's not a thing where it's not a thing where we take it for granted, you know. We've we've worked savagely hard um this year and down through the years to, to get where we are. Um but again, I suppose when you're in it, you you just want to want to keep uh, keep it going, you know, it is no <laughs> some of them lads uh, you, when you get to know them, they go through you to win a game of twenty five, don't mind uh, win 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 a county title, you know. So um, but yeah, when you're in it, you, you just want to, you just take it as I say, game by game, and it's it's, it's the next game that's the challenge and and stuff like that. But um, yeah, like as I said, we're we're hugely privileged to be in the position that we're in. We came it on in part one of the show, and he talked about it was an aim since the start of the year to win an All Ireland. When was it initially there, Fintan, that we talked about that, and you were kind of getting a feeling that we can go all the way here. 
I don't think we ever really spoke about it until uh, until obviously we got over over Turlock. Um, it's, it's it's something in the back of every lad's mind, obviously, that you want to win one, and especially say for the younger lads, myself and and Keen and Damien and them kind of lads. We we don't have our All Ireland like you know. So uh, look, it's a, it's an aim at the back of your mind, but obviously with the Gaulle Championship, you never mention that or you don't let yourself think about that until until it's actually a possibility. Just then after Goa, you, you get to sit back and watch the Munster Championship. The You get to see most of Bally Gunners' games. But even after your success of winning the county title, was it nice to get a break like that, James? Uh, yeah, definitely. I suppose, um, again, I suppose to give uh, the likes to David and, and we picked up a couple of niggles after the county final as well. That little bit bit of time to, to get um, get 100% right and... Um, I suppose Keenan gave us a small little bit of time off after the county final, and I thought we prepped we prepped very well for for the Belly Gunner game. Um, uh, so yeah, I thought that time worked well for us, and and in fairness, the management is our huge credit there to use use it very well and and got a spot on. Do you feel you were disrespected going into the Belly Gunner game? Uh, I wouldn't say disrespected is the right word. I suppose um, probably written off a small bit, but probably probably. Rightly so, if you were to look at our history of of all Ireland semi finals down through the years, but obviously we're a proud club and we we wouldn't like it to be said that we'd be written off. We say like that going into a match, but I suppose we wouldn't have used that as much as people probably would have thought of thought of that we used it like it was just was just any other game, and it was kind of a a game where you just go in and work as hard as you can and get stuck in and just see what happens. Did you like being written off though heading into that? Can... Seeing what happened in previous against Dunlop, yeah, it's, it's, to be honest with you, I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be much of a betting man. I did that to James, but <laughs> like I, you know, I, I wouldn't look into it. I wouldn't read into it too much. It's just, it was just another game to me, and it was just another. You know, you're just going to work again like any other day, and you're just trying to, trying, trying to do your best, I suppose, for the team to to get over the line. How did you feel heading into that, James? Because if you looked at the game plan you did, you just absolutely worked your socks off. Like there was videos going around where there's four or five Thomas's lads just hunting down the Bally Gunner lads. Yeah, well, I suppose we, we um, as I said in the preparation there, we, we put big emphasis on that. Um, at Bally Gunner, obviously, they, they, were, they are a serious, serious outfit. And obviously, if you, if you didn't match them work rate-wise, work rate there was no point going down to Port Leash, really, you know. So um, that was just the nature of it. Um, and I suppose, uh, yeah, it was, it was mainly from our point of view, just get the performance and see where, the, where, where that brought us, really. And on that game as a whole, is it the best game both of you have played in? Uh, yeah, definitely up there, I suppose. It was, it was funny all matches that you'd have, we say, fond memories of, of obviously, where you played well or... But yeah, even I'd say the second half of the All Ireland is probably up there with as good as as good of kind of feeling or as good of a. I suppose it's different, like what lads would describe as a good game to to spectators and a good game to me. Be kind of two different things. Like I'd rather I'd rather a dog fight where you have to go to the well and try eke out a result, or things are going against you and you have to try pull it back, or you know. So yeah, obviously, yeah. When you look back at some of the highlights and stuff, and and some of the scores and and say work rate, it's it's definitely up there. I suppose, yeah. Yeah, I, I'd be the same. Like it's, it, um, I think on on that evening as a team, we we should have been bet probably three times. You know, those d- at different stages, we we looked, we looked out of it at just the character of of the group, and even last in the All Ireland final, obviously different challenges again, and just the character of the group to to pull through. You know, when when there's a huge challenge, uh, when there's a huge challenge facing us. You know, so yeah, the the two the two days I think are are, are definitely up there. What were you both thinking during the penalty shootout? Before I took the penalty or after I took the penalty? Both. <laughs> Before I took it, uh, I wasn't. I wasn't really nervous or, or panicked at all. In fairness, <laughs> I, if you were honest, to... I, I was just going over asking Kenneth what's he letting Finton take one as he as he was just striking it, and I was proving <laughs> right, wasn't I? <laughs> I I was looking around for James, and he hiding him behind Kenneth. He was afraid to hit one. <laughs> I don't know. I was. I suppose in fairness, if you listen to Gerald Kelly ever, if you ever have the look of playing in front of him, uh, he's a confident guy and he said he was nearly excited that the game went to penalties because he was just looking forward to it. And even Connor, we were all kind of walking out and 
there was nearly a smile on his face like he was just pure and joy in the moment and I suppose when it comes to that you just pick your spot and you just hope that it goes in and obviously unlucky enough O'Keefe saved my one but you still have full full faith in the lads that will be coming after you or, or in journaling goals like they were going to get over the line yeah, I suppose I would I would have been confident enough looking over at the lads. It's easy enough to look over them, but uh, if there's the five lads that we we had taken them, like they're all excellent strikers, and even in fairness to Finton, he he's won very very well. Only it was it was an excellent stage, you know. So um, I think that the penalties were taken very well, and, and thankfully, I should look at it. It's, it's probably a bit of a lottery when it goes to that, but thankfully it went our way. It showed the character of your panel that day when Evan Duggan who. Only come on that day to slot away the penalty like he did to get you through to the all Ireland final. Yeah, I suppose like all oh, lads know know they have their roles and lads know that only fifteen lads can start. Like, but look, no matter what day you go out, like only fifteen can play, and it's a good thing. Obviously, it's a hard enough thing for managers to manage of, of keeping lads kind of interested when they're not starting. But like, I, I'd be confident the last day that you could have brought on ten subs in either game. You could have brought any of say. 10 or 11 subs on there for us and they wouldn't have say they wouldn't have dropped standard or they wouldn't have you, know, you wouldn't have noticed that they weren't a, a first 15 starter like even in the man the All-Ireland final it was Jamie and McLean and Bernard that set up in as point like you know it's, it's it's small things like that, that that doesn't go unnoticed in the group like James did you find it difficult as a group to come down from a high like because there's such relief of getting to the final was it was that a challenge at all heading into the final um, I know again. I suppose the um, the time helped there in in, in relation to that. Um, and again, huge credit, I suppose, to the to the management team. But as I suppose as a group of players as well, we probably if it, it was coming into to, to Christmas, I suppose, and um, we took maybe a week or two for of the nature of the game, going to extra time and going to penalties and stuff like that, and and the excitement around that and uh, to 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 come down from that, but. With a nice lead time in into the final again to to reset and refocus because obviously that was only a semi final there wasn't there wasn't any cup cup one at the end of that so um yeah again the 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 the, the, the lads used uh, used that time very well to uh, to to get ready for that. Was there much done then between Christmas lads? Yeah, I suppose there's like obviously lads are smart enough and and kind of around the block long enough now to know like. I know Robbie Lane and uh, HPU there had the gym home for Christmas Eve and there was a few lads, Ken Murray and Sean Fallon and these boys were in were in Christmas morning, you know, doing doing the weight sessions and getting the running sessions done like so like it, it's it's bits and pieces like that that probably lads are doing on the side that that you know no one is taking notice of, but we all we all you know, we all understand the work that's going in, say, from the lads that aren't playing the games as well as the lads that are playing the games. Then going into the final James, you had that All Ireland medal. Did you feel the uh, pressure or, or nervousness going into the game? Because obviously you're looking to add your second All Ireland, uh, going into that final. But how were you feeling heading into it? Uh, yeah, look at it. Was if you weren't nervous going into an All Ireland final, there'd be there'd be something wrong, you know. Um, which was a good nervousness. Like I knew I knew we had we had the work done. We we prepared very well, but so we we're just looking again for for performance and and to see see where that where that draws. Um, yeah, and and thankfully, uh, thankfully it went went the right way for a finish. And how were you feeling heading into Fintan? Yeah, I suppose um, probably up there were probably one of the most nervous. I wouldn't say nervous. I'd say more anticipating kind of the final. I suppose it was a long week heading into it, and you're kind of waiting around and. Obviously, we'd been there before, but we probably felt like we had a good chance at it if we if we showed up and performed. And you're just you're probably trying not to let your mind wander too far into the future, but trying to enjoy the week at the same time because like we're we're smart enough. We know that these times won't last forever, and they might never come around again. So it's probably finding that balance um, between enjoying the week with your with your friends and family, but remembering that you've a, you've a job to do as well. So much happened in that game, but you mentioned someone there, Finton, uh, in the middle of the podcast, Jared Kelly. He gets that free, but he talks about, I've heard him talking in an interview, he was reminding a few old Auckland lads that he got the free over and some of them hadn't uh, scored, but what kind of a character is he? Uh, Gerald, in fairness, like Gerald has a lot of work done. He he probably came in like we 
there was a time there we'd four county finals and four different goalkeepers like and he came in at the back of that and fairness he steady the ship like he's an awful lot of work done both on the field and off the field and like he's improved he's probably one of the best goalies in, in the country now at the moment like and look he's, he's a confident lad he's not afraid to, to tell umpires tell refs and tell other players his opinion like and it's no harm in fairness either it just shows how much he cares and he's the sort of guy that he doesn't care what anyone thinks of him as long as St. Thomas's are winning and it's probably it's probably a big part in 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 why he's gotten to the level he's got to. His distribution as well, James, has been huge throughout all of the championship three. Uh, yeah, savage. Yeah, um, as as Vincent said, like um, Joel works so hard on his game. He's he's the first player to train. He's he's the last to leave, and um, again, he he he'd be pushing standards and um from from a forwards point of view, like he he. Uh, he's very good in terms of hook outs and and you know where you have to run and, and where he's going to put the ball and stuff like that yeah so he's um he, he he's he's been excellent for for the last couple of years for us. into the all Ireland series James you found yourself in the forwards you would have played there previously but did you find that a big adjustment considering you'd played a lot of hurling in midfield um no I, I really I suppose it's it's um I suppose a bit of time helped with that as well between between the games. Um, we had a uh, good bank of training between between both. So, yeah, so again, I suppose it's, it's a it's a, um about about the team and 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 where where the lads think that you can you can help the team more strong. So yeah, it was a different role, but but um probably one I enjoyed really and uh, didn't have to do as much tracking back trying to cover fence and stuff like that. So that was uh that was a, that was good. Hinton, you were a busy man in that opening half and I have to ask you, which I'm sure countless people have asked you, but uh, was it a goal? Um, I was sure. I, I don't know. To be honest with you, the videos probably would, would say it was, like, but I probably nearly had the worst view of it all and I got more the most abuse most online about it. But no, I don't. I don't know. To be honest, is, is the honest answer. I, I, as I said before, I, I stopped the ball in my legs and I slid back into the goals and I was kind of lying down nearly trying to keep the ball out so I couldn't see I could just about see the ball and I find the line like but um I don't know, look it was probably a tight enough call in fairness and luckily enough for us on the day we got away with it, like, you know. What were you thinking during that period when it actually is happening? Do you realise that it's happening or is it just get the ball as way as quick as possible? Yeah, it's probably it's probably get the ball out of there as quick because in your head you're you don't think it's a goal. Obviously you you're trying to stop it with every with every ounce you have in you and I suppose I got up and just let the ball get rid of the ball as quick as I could and I just turned around and looked at the umpires and they were happy enough so I wasn't going to make any big deal about it. Did you get much of a reaction since the All-Ireland about that situation? I, obviously there's a good few uh, abusive messages on Facebook and comments on Facebook and stuff but I really try not to read them too much. Um, I said before opinions are like arseholes everyone has one like you know but I don't know. Look, it's 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 part and parcel of it. Now you just kind of get on with it. Most most of it is good natured. Lads are are genuinely asking you to know when you meet them at work or meet them on the street. Lads are just asking you what you genuinely thought. Like, but I don't know. We'll we'll get over it. What were you thinking looking on at that, James? To be honest, I, I didn't I didn't see it being up the other side of the field, and I I didn't realize it obviously till till after after the game uh, the bit of. A bit of emotion about it, um, yeah. So look at, uh, I suppose it, it wouldn't, we wouldn't have known as players being out on the pitch. In that first half, you were creating chances, but you left a couple of chances behind you. What was the feeling at half time? It was obviously huge to get those two points before half time. Tony going two points trailing at half time, ten eight. But what was the feeling in the dressing room like at half time between players and management? Um, uh, I suppose we we sorry. Do you want to go in there, friends? No, no, go on, go on. We're talking about your shooting. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> uh, no, look, I suppose we we weren't as sharp uh, as we'd 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 like to be in, in that first half. Um, I know we we probably left a couple of opportunities behind us, but uh, yeah, we probably just weren't weren't as as aggressive maybe as as we we, we would would have liked. Um, no, the wind was. Was fairly strong in fairness in the first half, so we're probably happy enough to go in at halftime, just just two points down, and and um, and yeah, just uh, maybe 
get ourselves together at half time and and uh, that's I suppose that's what we did and and uh, took the second half in as it was. Pretty much the same feeling, I presume, for you, Fenton. Yeah, I suppose it was you had Regan to stop shooting off the left and keep him on the right, but <laughs> I don't know, it's just <laughs> it was just tightening things up, I suppose, a small bit and and um they were getting they were kinda we were screwing ourselves, we were kinda as a back unit, we were driving the ball along to the forwards and they kind of had an extra body and they were coming back down the field as quick. So it's just kind of go back I, to I basics. Didn't, I didn't want to blame you there now, but I didn't want to throw you under the bus. But um, no, we're just supposed to try to work the ball out from the back and, and try to give the ball to the lad in the better position and, and just kind of probably cut out that small bit of panic that had crept into our game. Like With that in the opening half, Fintan, you are American Luke Hogan. He was obviously a lot different to a lot of forwards you've marked uh, he obviously liked to get the ball and play that cross field ball then once he got it it was it was a tricky customer in that opening half to mark I'd say yeah I suppose it, it was probably a different something different than than most teams that played against us say I was on my own inside in the small square and, and everyone else was kind of gone out and yeah I suppose there was a, there was a lot of space there was a good bit of running and I didn't have the luxury of James tracking back uh, minding them pockets of space like I normally would in Kenny Park and Fair Stadium but um, no, yeah, he was kind of a he was more of a distributor of all than a shooter. But um, I suppose it was up to other lads. Kind of, I was trying to just keep him outside me, and other lads were just trying to track the runners and and hope that we could break down kind of the second phase of the ball instead of instead of the first phase. On that, James, I have to ask after uh, half time you come out, things are going well. You make that challenge and. For a lot of people, they're still trying to figure out how that was a red card, and O'Loughlin's obviously avoided two reds then in the first half. As you make the challenge, what are you thinking? Uh, well, I suppose as I make the challenge, I actually got got a chance to watch it back the weekend there, and I kind of I can you react it, but I was more reacting because there was actually a, a good chance on for us for a score, but they obviously got a, got a turnover and. Maybe maybe Sean read into my reaction a small little bit as well. Maybe maybe it was an overreaction on my behalf. But I was, as I said, I was reacting about the the play breaking down more so than than anything else. But then I, when I realised he was he was calling me over, I suppose, and I said to myself, Jesus, what's what's going on here? Am I am I in trouble or or what? So um, yeah, it was it was <laughs> it was a bit of a shock to the system. All right, yeah, yeah. Was it a red card in your view? Um, I look at it, I suppose. From from his angle, he might have seen something from something different. But no, I don't. I don't think there was a, there was a huge uh, amount of contact there. In fairness to the O'Loughlin uh, O'Loughlin's players, well, he was probably looking for a free. He, he didn't realize maybe the outcome outcome of it as well. So um, no, I look at it. I think I I've I've given uh, worse tackles than that and 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 gotten away with it. But uh, look at that was that was in fairness. Rest have a tough job. He's a split second to to make a decision and. And that was his call on the day. Was it uncomfortable for you watching on then? Oh, you should look at it, I suppose, straight away. You're, you're like, geez, what am I after doing here after giving, giving the putting the lads in, a, in an, an awful awkward position? You know, that's that's the that's the first thought that comes into your head is you you you've let your teammates down. But um, yeah, look at it, uh, as, as I said for, uh, for the last week. You know, the performance they put in then for the last twenty twenty five minutes was. Was was unbelievable, you know. But um, yeah, look at as I said, it was hugely disappointing. Um, uh, when it, when it firstly happened, um, actually didn't I think I don't I didn't watch the match for a good five or ten minutes after. And so David Sherry that came over to me on the line then and and kind of got me going for a finish. And I think I was the loudest supporter in Saint, from Saint Thomas's for for a finish. Um, yeah. So it was uh, so it, it was a roller coaster ride, really. Was there much slagging the few days? After obviously you have the all Ireland, but was there much slagging among you after I suppose that incident? Oh, I don't, I don't think I'll ever live it down. To be honest, with you. I don't <laughs> think I'll ever, ever live it down. There was a uh, lads holding cards up over my head for for the last week and just sort of crack. So no, I don't think I'll ever live that one down. But <laughs> what do you think that after that happens? You're in, you're already in a battle, Fintan, and then you're reduced a man. Yeah, um, I suppose to be honest with you, I I'd be off the opinion that it was nearly a good thing that it happened to us because it kind of woke us up and and gave us not that we needed another purpose, but another another purpose to go and get this that we were kind of written off and you could feel that around the you know around the stadium you could nearly feel the 
the panic from supporters and even the Valley Hay or the O'Loughlin's boys were getting excited. You know, they could nearly, they could sense that something was on here. But we've been in that situation, you know, many a time. We've been either down 14 or, or we've been under the cosh, like, and it's just, we didn't panic. We probably enjoyed that old dog fight, like, you know, it's back to the wall thing, kind of stand up or, you know, and like it, it probably was the best bit of hurling we've done in, in a good while, like in, in regards to dogging it out and walking right from the forward. Like, just on that word, dogging it out, because I've heard you reference it a few times. What is it that you have this experience that you're just able to dog out countless games? Uh, yeah, I don't, there's no magic recipe or there's no, there's no magic formula, it's just. Just sheer honest hard work rate, and just you're not tired. Like you're never tired, even when you think you're tired, you're not. Just you know, it's it's. We say like Brendan Uniac there would have done a good bit of psychology with us down kind of this year. He kind of came into the group and stuff, and he would have you know, would have spoke about never been tired, and you know, all is finding that last kind of five percent to push on and and really drive on to the next level. Like so, Joe you know, coming towards the end of the game, there you think you're getting tired, or you think it's kind of slipping away from you. Know, just it's not. Don't panic, and just you know. Stay playing the game till the final whistle is gone. You go three up in that second half, then they get it back level. You're watching on from the sideline at that stage, James. Damien McGlynn gets the ball. He looks like he's going to be bottled. He gets it out to Aina, and Aina just pulls off a remarkable score. But was that uncomfortable, or, or what are you thinking then? I am uh, looking out, as I say, that was, uh, that was. The worst, uh, worst supporter uh, from, from St Thomas at that stage it was just, just unbelievable, wasn't it? it was, it was a magical score. Like this, um, it's probably up to one of the the best points ever scored in Crow Park, is it? Um, just a magical, magical score. And uh, I don't think I, I ever ran as, as as fast in the first half. Uh, straight away after the final whistle of the winter, as I got in as quick as I could, you know, just to, just to say say thanks for for digging me out of that hole, you know. Um, so it's just, just just an unbelievable score, you know. But Ian, you know, just he's he's capable that he, he and he has been for three years, you know. You see him doing it there Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, uh, Sunday, Sunday evenings, all back in the pitch when we're training, you know. So um, that's in his locker room. Just to do it at that moment uh, was was unbelievable. Mark Bergen then gets the free printed, and you're obviously close enough when it lands in. What's going through your head? Yeah. I- it's kind of it's hard to kind of hold your emotions when it's the last three, but he's probably a good bit out. So we were kind of nearly worried about it dropping into the square. Obviously, we've had heartbreak with last minute goals, so that wasn't going to happen again. But he they won the free, and Sean Stack came in. And before he hit it, I just said to Sean Stack, I said, How long is that? Or I said, Is this the last play? And he didn't really answer me, and I was getting a small bit sick. But then I seen it, it was kind of veering wide, and Gerald Kelly wasn't, wasn't shy and letting us know that it was going wide. and I suppose it's just a second or two pass and I looked at Sean Sack again and I let her roar. I said, is this the last play? And he just made eye contact and he blew the final whistle and she just scenes of elation. Like, you know, it's just madness, really. How do you describe that feeling, lads, when you've realised that you've claimed a Tommy Moore Cup? Uh, I don't think there is. There is there is words. I've been asked that obviously a few times as well this week and I don't think that, that you can actually put it into words the feeling of obviously relief and and just joy and just like there's so many emotions coming out like there was we were back in one in uh in Yates Lodge in Peterswell on the Monday and at different times different lads were nearly crying like just just the emotion and just the pure happiness and just I don't know it's just it, you nearly get goosebumps thinking back about it just like probably trying for so long and, and just dreaming of that since you were so young that for it to finally actually come in to, to come through is just, just you can't describe it like James we only had Kenneth on in part one and he was saying you nearly need to appreciate this when you're on the pitch because it doesn't happen every year you're obviously well aware of that but you want to appreciate it and then Bridget and Glenn are trying to make their way on onto the pitch straight after for the football but you want to basically appreciate that and just soak it all in. Yeah, definitely. Um, like uh, there's a few of us there trying for ten years to get back to that, to get back to that again. You know, and I think I would have would have said it to, to a few of the younger lads, I suppose, to to appreciate appreciate it. You know, and and I think everyone in the group knows like the work that we put in this year and down through the years to to get back there. You know, so. 
but as Finton said, like there's 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 no words that can describe it really. You know, um, it's a special times and uh, like you know, thank, thankful enough I had my little girl there and, and a little man and, and got them out on the pitch for a while as well and just moments and memories that you'll that you cherish forever. You know, and that we'll that we'll remember forever. Looking back on it a week after you won it, what's the one memory for both of you that stands out? Yeah, I suppose the probably is hard enough to put your finger on one, but I suppose if, if coming back into the clubhouse and being up on the stage there with looking out the hall was was wedged and, and everyone is just so happy and just you're taking you like obviously people have struggles outside of hurling and stuff, and you're just kind of hoping, looking down at them, that they're happy that you take their mind off whatever struggles they're going through, or you know whatever, whatever bit of bad luck they're having at the moment. You just see joy and elation in a lot of their faces, and it just it just makes it all worthwhile, really. Um, I suppose it's it's quite important. You're you're into it. Just no, I was just going to say, what do you put this finally getting over the line? If you had to put it down to one thing, what is it? Jesus, you're after putting us on the spot there, no part. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's coming for a while. Like obviously you don't you don't get uh, you don't get all is what you what you deserve. Like but I suppose we we've been a long time working working at this and, and trying our hardest for this and I suppose the, the lads that came in this year, obviously Robbie the strength and conditioning brought to the next level and obviously Brendan with the psychology and stuff like it just just probably brought us to a to a level where we hadn't kind of gone before like and you know it probably like it's 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 all them kind of one percent that, that add up to, to make it fucking catch over the line sir. And it's it's probably a it's accumulation of, of stuff really but I'd say it's it's obviously everyone pushing in the in the one direction, like in fairness and, and Fintan probably agree with this as well. Like there's no real egos within the group. Like it is every 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 lad is is a, is aware of, of of what they have to do and, and the standards that they have to meet uh, within the group. And like even <clears throat> from I think uh, from the first time we we won a county title to, to now, I don't think it has changed any any one of the lads or or as I said, there's, there's no egos within the group. Um, and look, you you probably you need a little bit of luck along the way as well. It's um, in terms of Lads not getting injured, uh, having having everyone fit and stuff like that, and and just small little things within games. And um, again, like a lot of those games could have, could have gone the other way. So we're we're very privileged, and and uh, yeah. So again, it's probably not just down to one thing; it's probably down to accumulation of a, of a lot of stuff. There's probably still a bit of uncertainty whether Kenneth's going to stay on, but I presume you want him to. But he obviously now has the going minor job to win to, but. What has he brought to the table? I uh, sure, like in fairness, we a lot of us obviously James hurled him for a few more years than I did, but I suppose we've seen Kenneth as a hurler and, and then Kenneth as a manager, and he just he just he gets our respect straight away when you've seen what he's done, like many a hole he's do, dug us out of. And in fairness, before me and James were hurling, he was keeping us up senior year after year, like he was he was that good of a hurler. So like he's just his attention to detail. I suppose him and Cahill, Brendan, all the lads that are there, like just. Even my guarantee on the stats, like it's just he's probably attention to detail and his ability to bring the right members of management in with him at the right times. And he just he just loves hurling, he just knows hurling so well that you just whatever he tells you to do, you just do it. Yeah, like I said, just to, exactly what Finton said, like I suppose Keenan came in uh, at a time when, when no one really wanted us and, and everyone thought we're probably on the, on the downward spiral after, after winning three in a row. Um, and like the job he's done since he's come in, uh, he's been he's been unbelievable. Um, obviously four young kids at home as well, and and uh, like the commitment he's given us has uh, has been unbelievable. Um, and uh, like he he owes Saint Thomas nothing, and, and we owe him everything really. To be honest with you, after after what he's after bringing us these these last couple of years. Is there a bit of convincing, a bit of phone calls now this week to get him to stay on? I think if the, yeah, if all the lads that he had working for him, if they work extra hard maybe for the next two or three months, they he might he might stop in the fall, but you wouldn't know. <laughs> no chance of that anyway. <laughs> Just on that, 
Fintan, I think it's nine people that are obviously involved with St. Thomas Senior Herders that are working for Colin Burke Electrical. What's that like to be playing with all of them and then working with them? Yeah, I suppose it, it nearly, you nearly have a closer bond with them. If it's possible, then you would with other lads. Obviously, you're, there's lads there you're spending 24 hours a day, which you're going to work at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock in the morning, and then you go home, change your clothes, and you're going training with them then for three or four hours. Like it's, you nearly know what they're thinking more than what you're thinking yourself. Like, but I don't know. It's 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 great. Like it's it's you know when you're, you're stuck in a road at work or whatever. Like there's always a lad there that'll help you out. They won't leave you hanging. Like you know. And how do you find working as an electrician and balancing playing Ireland? It's it's grand. I suppose it's, it's it's trying to find the time to get it all done. It's probably the hardest part. But look, you're privileged to be in the position to be able to do both. And there's many a people or person out there like that only wishes they could get up in the morning and go to work not to mind playing hurling like so you just get on with it like you know there's no point complaining and no one's going to listen to you anyway so just just get on with it Just on this you won't be thinking about 2024 yet obviously you're, you're still going to soak this in for another few weeks but when all these players James if four players involved with the go into county senior hurlers when they're not with you What's that dynamic like? Um, I suppose that that just goes back to what we were saying in Iran. Like, um, like the panel the last couple of years has has been unbelievable. You know, like uh, as I said, with with the panel there, I think of of thirty seven um this year, and like very seldom lads be missing training and, and stuff like that. So yeah, the standards are are kept up to, uh, throughout the year. And I suppose when when the couple of lads come back, um. It gives us again a huge boost in terms of of driving standards again. But yeah, I think as a group we're we're an excellent group um, to train and 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 to keep standards high. You know, so um, yeah, I don't I don't think it it, it affects us too much in terms of lads going away do, doing representing the county and, and stuff like that and and coming back into the group. Then Connor Glass Eve Dunn Doherty and Kieran McFall from Glen. We're back in with Derry on the Wednesday. What were you thinking Saturday when you seen them Fintan? Were you thinking you were going to get a call about a Walsh Cup final at any stage? Yeah, what Sorry, was your turn- excuse, Fintan? What was your excuse? I was, I was, turning, the, I was turning the phone off. <laughs> Hard on, fairness. Yeah, you should look at each to their own, in fairness. The boys obviously wanted to go back in and they were obviously asked back in and Look at personally, I suppose, to be hard enough kind of to come down from that high and, and get yourself right again. Um, the bit of dancing asking. you did Saturday night on it was you feel, you seemed uh, fit and healthy. Yeah, I was ready to go. I was hoping Jeff would have called me that hour at <laughs> three o'clock Saturday night. I don't know. Look at each to their own. I suppose in fairness, that a bit of a break is no harm. You'd join your kind of six years on the go there with kind of only getting a week off. You'd be kind of getting a small bit sick of it. But look, the week is fine. Refresh yourself and, and go again. How are you feeling now being back in with going now? You're, you're back since Tuesday, obviously. Yeah, I suppose it's no harm to get back. You'd be blowing the first session, right? But I'd be well used to blowing. But I don't know. It's grand. It's it's no harm to get in and then kind of get the head right again and get back into the headspace and just drive on. And hopefully, hopefully this year now we can go all the way. Just on last year, you started most of the games, but you came on in that game, obviously against Limerick. Is there a hunger and eagerness there for you now to get back into the team? Oh yeah, obviously there there always is, and you always want to be starting. And last year I probably had one of my poor years. I probably wasn't had an own legal in my hamstring for a while, and came didn't come back as fit as I probably could have. And just an accumulation of small things probably wasn't hurling well and stuff. But look, every day you go out, you try your hardest, and it, nobody purposely plays bad. And so you know, you're always going to have that drive to represent, obviously the club and and, and your family. Like so, fingers crossed, you wouldn't know. Was it a frustrating year last year for going for yourself? Ah, sure. Any year you're not starting, or you know that your form isn't great, it's frustrating because you're 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 nearly working harder than you would be if you were hurling well and you're putting in the extra. Then it's maybe not working for you. But in fairness, say the the club lads that are on the panel and even the club lads at home, like say lads that have gone through it and stuff, would be they wouldn't be shy and you know telling you to relax and just you know to come around again, like not to panic. Just on that game for yourself, watching the lads playing with go there can be criticism about different players at different stages, but how do you feel when, say, one or two, of, say, the Thomas's lads might be getting criticised watching on? 
And again, look at I suppose it's uh I, I won't say what Fintan said earlier on, but I'd have to say an opinion as as even in terms of opinions, we you, you can't uh, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but look at you know the character of of uh of every lad at that level, you know, they they wouldn't be there if they didn't have a massive, massive character, you know. So um yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, be reading too much into into it, but as I said, the character always shines through. So again, the lads are going to go up and down in terms of, of how to hurl and how to play and stuff like that. So yeah, the talent allows come back to the come back to the to the top. And what's the goal, Vinton, for you with Galway this year, personally? I suppose personally, I think everyone has the same goal: is winning Leinster or winning All Ireland. Like, and if you're not on that wavelength, like there's probably no point getting up, getting up in the morning, doing the gym sessions, or, or going to train and for four or five hours in the evening, like you know. So, yeah, I think the the goal, obviously, within the group and, and both personally, is, is that Leinster and, and All Ireland medals. Is it a break now, then, James? Free for a while as club players? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, <clears throat> probably just uh, take a break there for. For a couple of weeks, and uh, I don't know what the what the date is in terms of um league the league this year, or, or I suppose obviously championship game will be the back end of the year. Then again, um, so yeah, I suppose just take a couple of weeks off, and, and as I said, enjoy this um enjoy this achievement, and 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 get ready then again for for the year coming. Great stuff, lads. Well, thanks a million for coming on this week's podcast, and congratulations again on a fantastic achievement. Oh, well, thank you.